I'm going to cover the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons, but I'm also going uh, <laughs> to give a broader context, which is a, a new campaign process within the UN and outside the UN by civil society that's um, being led by various organisations and hopes to build on the success of the campaigns to ban landmines, cluster munitions and so on. And it is already widely accepted that nobody should have chemical weapons, yet the British government uh, some years ago deliberately said that this, the law didn't apply to nuclear weapons, which obviously is a, a clear indication that the law does apply to nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> that was joke number one. <laughs> right, um, that's, that's my main criticism of the other report, of, uh, inoffensive, or no, sorry, it's offensive security, that was joke number two, um, that <coughs> there's not enough jokes in it. <laughs> um, but apart from that, it's a cracking good read. Um, so, just I'll come I'll come back to this, but at the moment the, uh, there was a there was a meeting in New York just recently, um, and there's at the United Nations General Assembly number 68, 125 states signed up to a statement basically saying look we've got to get rid of these nuclear weapons, uh, and <coughs> they should be illegal. That's a paraphrase. And that's grown from 2012, it's 91 more than there were. There was a conference hosted uh, in Oslo, Norway, earlier this year. There's going to be another one hosted by Mexico, that's the states of Norway and Mexico, in February 2014. And our role has been to assist the organizations involved understand the full impacts of nuclear weapons and to really inform a new generation of people who think that nuclear weapons are bad, but they probably don't realise quite how bad. And I had to go back to calculations I did a very long time ago, in another century. Um, so, in the remainder of the presentation, I'm going to present a bit more detailed information about information that was presented in Oslo. It was presented to all the state delegates, and discussed by large numbers of civil campaigners. Um, and the first thing they wanted us to do was to work out the effects of one nuclear weapon. And why? Well, the reason was they wanted to look at the effects of one nuclear weapon because nobody could really question, well, if the effects of one nuclear weapon is really bad, then a lot's going to be a lot worse. So we choose one nuclear weapon. Then, then they said, right, Okay, how big a nuclear weapon? So we, they chose an intermediate size, 100 kilotons. That is intermediate size, but that's uh, 10, 8 times bigger than the one that lands in Hiroshima. So that these days is an intermediate nuclear weapon. It's equivalent to 100,000 tons equivalent of TNT in its energy. But as I pointed out, it does a lot more than that. And um, I also looked at the climatic uh, impacts. So, and you might like to know, so where did they decide to drop this particular weapon? Well, so as not to offend anybody, um, they dropped it on Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> well, but Manchester is a medium-sized city. Let's put it that way. If you want to, love, when I first did this research, I was looking at the effects of larger weapons in the megaton range on London. So this was, this Manchester is a fairly typical large-ish non-mega city, and a 100 kiloton weapon is uh, just one of the warheads that sits inside uh, a Trident missile somewhere as well, so there you go. So here we go, uh, this is Manchester, this is the zone of, well, that's basically the whole city centre, which is completely destruction. And then this is the outer ring of severe destruction. So I'm, I don't know if you know Manchester very well, but um, there's not a lot left in centre of Manchester, basically. Um, so, one minute of devastation, 81,000 dead, 212,000 injured, 40% hospitals destroyed, 50% of police, 25% of fire, 30% of ambulance services. Right, that's all gone. 
just like that, really. So, there's a two kilometer radius of complete destruction with 39,000 dead in it. And you can go on. So you've got, we have, you work out the injuries from trauma, burns, crush injuries, you've got roads blocked, cars set alight, severe cuts, burns, injuries, flying debris from glass and masonry. If you're downwind and if it's a ground burst, you've got fallout uh, that could have another 40,000 casualties. The symptoms, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, blood loss over two weeks. You don't know if you've had a dose that's going to kill you or not, but you get those symptoms and it might kill you. Or not. So that, you can't really think of a more horrible range of things that could happen to you as a result of a, of a weapon. And the loss of one and a half thousand hospital beds. Then you've got nearly 600,000 people in severely or heavily damaged homes and 600,000 displaced persons. You've got loss of all your railways, the main railway stations, bus stations, tram terminal, a couple of football stadiums, a World Trade Centre, the media centre. Uh, it, it's shocking. So that's the that's one nuclear weapon. And basically, we also dropped one on Oslo for the conference. Because um, that seemed like a good idea. <laughs> did we drop anyone? Did we drop one anywhere else? Not, not just then. No, right. <laughs> See, so basically, the conclusion that, you, that everybody comes to, the medical professionals come to, that we couldn't cope with one of these going off. And that's even with all of the other resources in the country available. You couldn't deal with this level of casualties. You'd either live or you'd die, and you might deal with a little, a minute <coughs> number of people. And you couldn't go into the city centre safely for years anyway, if it was ground. Um, and I went back and I, I thought, well, OK, let, I, I wonder how many nuclear weapons there are around still. And um, anybody want to tell me how many nuclear weapons are at knocking around? Knocking about? 6,000. 6,000? Any advance on 6,000? 26,000. How many? Well, it's 17 now. 17,000 or 17? 17. 17,000, right. Okay. Right, well, there's a lot. I'm going to tell you. They're held by a lot of countries, actually. People talk about five nuclear weapon states. That's not really true. I'd, I think there's some weasel wording going on there. So let's see. So uh, this is now the stockpiles and there's ready to go. OK? So Russia's got about 8,500. But they've got 1,800 ready to go. The United States have got just under 8,000, and they've got 2,150 operational, ready to go. Quite a, and quite a few of both of these are launch on warning, which means if they seriously think they're being attacked, they're ready to fire them off before they get hit, because so they're it, worried about first strike. So if any one of them were hit, though, both the 8,500 are vulnerable, just because they're not, not ready to go if they were hit by something else? Well, some of them will be, some of them wouldn't really, um, what's your question? I'm not sure. Is 1,800 deployable if they were hit by somebody else? Oh, I see what you yeah? mean. Or is it 8,500 if they were hit by somebody else who will right. be vulnerable? That's how many they've got. Yeah. These are the ones that are ready to fire quickly. If they were hit first. <laughs> <laughs> Right. If they were hit, if they could hit, if somebody could hit all those 1,800, obviously they couldn't farm them. But quite a few of them are hiding in tunnels. Or, uh, so that, that isn't going to happen. Or they've been submarines. Yeah, and they're in different places. And they're all dotted around the place. And that, that's true of the American uh, weapons. So the, the original fast response weapon was a Minuteman. Uh, weapon that was the American quick response one, but um, there are there are also significant numbers of weapons <coughs> in Europe as well. Um, it appears rather more 
that Russia have got than the West has deployed. But anyway, so France, China, United Kingdom, Pakistan, India, Israel, North Korea. So who said 17,000? See, somebody's very well informed. Do you, are you with an organization? <laughs> She's, um, what, what is your? Uh, UK um, coordinator, yeah. I can. Yeah. See, she, I can, she can. I can. That's the International <laughs> Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. So, there you go. They obviously know something, rather. Right? The, the figures for Israel seem a bit low. I've had seen figures two to three hundred. Well, yes. Yeah. I took these from the plowshares, who I thought were a good source. The typical war size is war head size is a hundred to three hundred kilograms. Who did I miss out though, you see? I, you see, I, I think there's more nuclear countries in reality than that. For a start, all NATO's 28 countries designed, designed, signed, they probably designed it as well, the defense, I can't say, the deterrence and defense posture review in May 2012, okay? They signed that, 28 of them. And that says, while well, nuclear use is seen as extremely remote, it's a supreme guarantee of what <laughs> one hastens to think would it be a supreme guarantee of. But pilots in the air forces of the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, despite what they say, Italy, and I'm not sure about Turkey, are trained to use and drop B-61 drop bombs, okay, which have an explosive power, they used to have an explosive power of about 300 kilotons, is probably now 50 to 100 kilotons. So they've, and they're American weapons which they're trained to use, um, from these dual capable F-16s tornadoes. The B-61 weapon is about, is it partially undergoing a 10 billion dollar upgrade, okay? That's to make it more accurate. That's assuming you know what it's going to hit. The, the Mod 11 was the Earth Penetrator so-called Bunker Buster Weapon, yes. So I think there's an argument you should count all of NATO, really, because the ones who haven't got nuclear weapons to play with, they have snow count, which is, they love these bloody acronyms, so I'm going to try and say them, supporting nuclear operation weapons with conventional air tactics. So in other words, even though you haven't got nuclear weapons to play with, you can refuel nuclear armed planes, or you can identify targets from the hit, so you're part of the nuclear force, aren't you? So I, I, I really think pretty much all of NATO's uh, nuclear, so that's 28, okay? So you add up Russia, China, Pakistan, Israel, North Korea, and you've got 36 nuclear weapon states of one sort or another. 